Hi, I'm Zach Stinson from Orlando, Florida, and today I'm going to be demonstrating a medial patellofemoral ligament reconstruction technique using an onlay technique with Arthrex double knotless knee fiber tacks. On my back table, I have three double knotless knee fiber tack anchors. Two will be for the patella and one for the femur. Associated with that are the drill and drill guide for those anchors. There is also a 2.4 millimeter beef pin. There are two K wires that are loaded with uh, nitinol loops in addition to two O fiber wire passing sutures for the transosseous pull through of the anchors. And then finally, two number two fiber snares that will be utilized to assist with shuttling the graft through the knee. So for this technique, which is a pull-in technique, we are not going to be using the metal inserter. Instead, I'm going to unload the anchor so that I can free up the apex of the anchor. So you also will not need to have uh, the safety suture. And to pull it in, you're going to use an O fiber wire suture that will be placed again at the apex of the anchor. So first, I'm gonna show the uh, drilling of the 2.6 millimeter drill. And that is bottomed out. So the next step is using the uh, K-wire with the nitinol loop. When you're driving the K-wire in, it is critically important to make sure you drive the larger diameter portion of the K-wire. I find the socket I just made. This is the 2.6 socket. So now it's bottomed out in the socket. So drilling and you will feel, all right, it's popped through the lateral border and I can see the tip of the uh, pin under the skin. And so now I'm going to go through the skin. So now that I've gone through the skin, I can grab it on this side, and now I can feel that it's going through much easier because the larger diameter is already through. The anchor is loaded with the O fiber wire suture at the apex. This anchor is going to be pulled in to the socket that I created using the passage of this K wire. Okay, so I've passed the tails through the nitinol loop. And first, I'm going to use the K wire to just pass the tails of the O fiber wire suture. So now I have the O fiber wire suture through the lateral side of the patella. And again, just through the skin, there was no incision made on the lateral side. And now the anchor is hubbed up against uh, the aperture of the 2.6 millimeter socket I just made. As I'm about to pull in uh, the anchor, uh, to help give some counter traction you can, uh, and, and make sure you're lined up, you can pull back on the anchor, but you wanna make sure you're pulling on the loops and not the sutures that would cinch down the loops. So, and again, uh, most of the, uh, all of the force uh, pulling in line with the socket is coming from uh, my pull of the O fiber wire. So. We've got counter pressure. You can see it's already dunking in a little bit and you don't have to uh, pull you know, real hard here. It's just a slow, steady pull because there'll be gradual uh, relaxation uh, and deformation that allows the anchor to, to just carefully be uh, deployed into the socket. So I placed the first anchor uh, just above the equator of the patella. The second anchor is going to be roughly uh, 15 millimeters superior to that. Now, one of the keys here is uh, that just due to the uh, anatomy of the patella and the curvature, uh, there it may be a tendency to want to bring uh, your hand more superior here. But you want to be careful not to converge with the uh, anchor you just uh, placed. So I do try and go somewhat uh, parallel Okay, so now we have our second 2.6 millimeter socket. And again, I will be placing a K wire into that socket. And it's going to go out the lateral border of the patella again. Just like the previous anchor, I have the O fiber wire suture that's again loaded around the uh, apex of the anchor that was unloaded. 
I will pass this one through the night null loop. And now the passing K wire will take the O fiber wire outside the lateral aspect of the knee. And I'm going to move to the lateral side to finish pulling in uh, the anchor. So uh, again, we've got counter pressure on the lateral border of the patella. Our two uh, patella anchors are in place. And next we're gonna move to the femoral anchor. And I'd just like to show uh, my technique for creating a pathway for passage of the graft. So I've previously dissected the vastus medialis uh, tendon. Uh, and here's the knee capsule. So in between those two layers, I will pass a tonsil down to the medial epicondyle, which I will feel with my thumb. And so then I can feel the tip of the tonsil and that's where I'm gonna mark out making my incision. And we're using a knotless fiber tack anchor here. So you don't have to dissect um, much, but you do want to make sure that you have an opening for the shuttling of your graft. So I have two number two fiber snares that I'm going to use to shuttle the graft with. And I will pass these up with the tonsil. And a critical point here is that I'm passing them in reverse of each other. So here is a loop end, here is a tail end. So the tonsil will be used to pass the two fiber snares up through the layer for the MPFL. So we've made our approach for the ephemeral anchor and pass the uh, two, uh, number two fiber snares. Now I'm going to position this uh, 2.4 millimeter uh, beef pin uh, at the ideal uh, position on the femur, uh, which I like to use Shottle's point. So on the fluoro shot, uh, you do have the option of using uh, this guide, which will help you identify Shottle's point. Again, lining up the posterior cortex uh, and intersecting the apex of Lumensat's line and the overlap of the uh, posterior cortex of the femur and that will guide you exactly at Shottle's point. So I've identified Shottle's point and I'm going to advance my 2.4 millimeter beef pin at that point. And I have the guide for the knotless fiber tech anchor uh, at that position. And I'm advancing it approximately two centimeters. And at this point you have the option, you can take the pin out and advance the uh, anchor with the inserter using a mallet, or if it's a little bit harder bone, you can use the drill for the anchor. So I'll take the pin out. And now I'm advancing a 2.6 millimeter drill on that same trajectory as the pin was just placed. And I'm going to hub the drill and now I will uh, use the uh, inserter for the anchor in the traditional manner with a mallet. Again, in my same trajectory. And I feel nice, firm resistance as I'm malling it in. So that gives me good confidence that the anchor is getting well seated. Now I will unload the sutures. I've inserted the anchor and I'm just going to pull on the safety suture to set it and that is well set and uh, fixed in place. And I'm very happy with that uh, fixation. So now I have three anchors. I have the two patella anchors, my femoral anchor. These three anchors will be used for the all onlay fixation of the uh, semi-tendinosis allograft that I'm now going to pass with the shuttling uh, fiber snares. And so now I have the uh, semi-tendinosis allograft. This is about six millimeters in diameter uh, by, I like to use at least 240 millimeters in length, typically, again, depending on the size of your patient. And I previously passed the fiber snares. And again, they were in reverse direction. So the reason for that is I'm first going to pass down one tail of the graft through the second layer of the knee that we created earlier. So here's the snare. And this is my other snare that I'm gonna make sure I don't pull with, with me. So I've pulled the graft through with the snare. Now, this is the key step where 
the graft is going to be passed through the uh, femoral uh, anchor. And I will use a hemostat to... And this is, again, a, a double knotless anchor. So there's two loops that I will be passing the graft through. So it's essentially two uh, points of fixation. And the goal is to have the two loops right at the apex of the graft. But first, I'm going to pass the, the tail of the graft back up through the knee before I cinch down the anchors. So now uh, we will pull the snare up through, grab the tails of the suture in the graft, and then back up through. Uh, one thing to make sure here that both loops do get cinched down up against the femur, and I'm uh, using uh, a right angle here to help give me a little bit of counter traction as I sequentially cinch down the loops. I'll take this out, and I'll do a final pull, and you can see the graft is coming down to the femoral onlay position. And I've pulled till, until I get full resistance. And I know that the uh, anchor is fully set and the loops are cinched down. And now I'm going to pull on the uh, two tails. And now that I have the femoral side fixed into place uh, at the apex, I'm going to now secure the two tails of the uh, graft. And I will uh, go to the lateral side of the knee to do that. So I'm going to pass each limb of the graft through both loops of each respective anchor. And I'll have an assistant help hold those limbs as I do that. And again, I'm on the lateral side of the knee. I just feel like this helps me uh, with this critical part of the procedure, making sure that I'm getting the optimal tension, optimal position. And I want these in line as best as possible because we're trying to get as much graft isometry as we can at this point of the procedure. And so the next step I do here is I make sure the knees flexed at about 30 degrees. And then I have an assistant hold the patella reduced in the trochlea and pull the graft up as much in line with how they're going to lay in the onlay position. So not at a severe angle, but, but just kind of in a, in a natural position where they want to lay. Now, I'm going to start cinching down just the blue loop. And you don't have to cinch it all the way down. And at first, you want to actually make sure you have uh, an instrument in the loop so that you don't over cinch it. And I'll start it. So I've got it. I'm going to get it close, but not all the way. So that's pretty close. And then I'll go to the next limb of the graft. and so. With the knee flexed between that 20 to 30 degree angle, with the patella reduced, with the uh, two limbs of the graft seated at the ideal position that you previously made for your anchors, you can feel pretty confident that you're in the right position and you're going to have isometry. You just do also want to make sure you've got good tension on the graft before you fully cinch down the, the loop of the anchor. So I'm going to do a final cinching of these loops. Now we are essentially done. But the beauty of this uh, anchor is that I have another loop that I can utilize to not only create additional fixation, but now create more of a continuous loop type fixation with a broad footprint. And the way I'll do that is I'll take each respective limb through the opposite loop. I'll take this one. So this will come in the opposing direction and I can provisionally cinch down this loop. And again, I, I like to have an instrument in the loop just to make sure I don't over cinch it. So it's down a good bit of the way, but not all the way. And I will now again take my inferior limb through the superior black loop. Okay, so now I have, you can see it's a beautiful example of how you're going to have a broad footprint and essentially a continuous loop of graft uh, once these final uh, loops are cinched down. So I'll cinch down the loop here. 
and that gives you more confidence in the amount of graft that's secured. So both loops have now been cinched down and we can take all of our retractors out and get a good idea of the isometry and our stability of the patella and make sure we're happy with what we just did for the reconstruction because the reconstruction is essentially done here. You have the two uh, remnant or excess uh, tails of the graft that you can um, suture back down onto themselves, which is what I typically do. If there's a lot of excess, then you can uh, cut off uh, some of that excess and just suture down. So now just to check graft isometry, I will bring the knee from extension to flexion and I'm very happy with the position of the graft, the isometry, and now checking the patella stability. It's stable, but it still has some lateral uh, translation, which you want, um, but obviously it's not dislocating. So it has that uh, seat belt uh, function of the MPFL that you want, uh, particularly at that 20 to 30 degree range of motion. Okay, so I finished the femoral fixation. I'm very happy with the isometry of the fixation of the graft. Uh, and now that I'm happy with them, I will uh, cut these limbs. One of the really cool things since I've been doing the all onlay technique is the fixation is so robust and you've already accomplished your goal, which is stabilizing the patella. And I really have less concern as I had in the past uh, about how quickly to start moving them. So I am uh, moving them a lot faster by two weeks, uh, full range of motion, which I think is another great uh, aspect of utilizing this technique.